If you want to learn how to keep eye contact with your Zoom guests and still look at the camera, then watch this video. Hi, Gary Cruz with AmazeStudios.com here. If you're new to my channel, I share tips and tricks on how to improve your live streams. Today, I'll be showing you how I use a teleprompter split mirror to mirror my display in front of my camera. If you don't know what a teleprompter is, it is a software that is in combination of hardware that is placed in front of the camera so that the subject can continue looking at the camera while following a script, just like I am now. This teleprompter is designed to be used with an iPad, but I had a spare small HD sitting around and I thought it would be great if I could use it to mirror my display so that when I'm on a Zoom or Skype call, I don't have to look down at my computer. Usually that's not a problem if I'm just using the built-in webcam like this, but when I use my Sony a6400 and it's placed at eye level, looking down at my computer is a little more obvious so the challenge is that the seven inch screen is hard for me to read normal text. So I, I ordered a 10.1 inch Lilliput monitor to see if that helps. You want to order a monitor that's designed for cameras since it'll have video flip features. Keep in mind, anything you put in front of the mirror will look backwards. If you want a full list of my setup, please see the description below. I'm currently using live streaming software called Ecamm. This allows me to add multiple camera sources, overlay titles on my video. Please see my Ecamm playlist for other videos related to this software switcher. Right above my Mac is a Blackmagic Video Assist that's recording the output of Ecamm. I'm currently doing this instead of using the built-in recorder since I plan to edit this in Final Cut Pro using a ProRes codec that requires no rendering. The .mov files from Ecamm are compressed and will be a lower quality. Now that I went over the basics of this setup, let's see if the larger monitor helps. I did a few measurements before ordering this monitor, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Before I start with unboxing, I'm sure I'll get a few questions of this view meter underneath my iMac. I plan on doing reviews of these gadgets on my GaryCruz.com channel where I review cool tech just like this. And if it's of interest to you, see the description for the link and consider subscribing there too. Now, let's unbox the Lilliput and switch out my teleprompter. All right, now I'm going without a script and let's see how this works out. All right, here's the box. In the broadcast monitor, it's 10.1 inches. It is the Lilliput model A11 4K. I'm not going to read that. I'll just sh show you. I'll overlay the, uh, the information on the video. Nicely packed so far. We've got uh, some foam. What's this? Wow. Oh, it's the monitor itself. Okay, so it's a little lighter than I thought. All right, so here's the monitor. On the bottom, we've got HDMI in and then HDMI out. We have an upgrade via USB, a VGA, and then SDI in and SDI out. What's cool is that these are also pass through. So if you put an SDI in, you'll get the SDI out. All right, let's see what else is in here. We've got an instruction manual, and this is the 12 volt and two, uh, milli 2000 milliamp or two amp power adapter. And it looks like it's the smaller 2.1 millimeter compared to the 2.5 millimeter on the Blackmagic Video Assist, which is very annoying. And this looks like it is a battery plate that goes on the back. Okay, it's the, uh, the Sony L battery. It's your standard Sony battery plate. And then, oh look, here we have a mini HDMI 
to standard HDMI. This will work with the Canon cameras. Oh, here we go. And then this is a sun hood that goes around the edge there, which I'll probably won't be using for my teleprompter. Since this is the same 12 volt voltage that I'm using with the small HT monitor, I'll go ahead and use this. I'll just, just swap this out, just to do a clean swap out. All right, let me see if I can switch. I'm gonna have to switch this to a different mic. All right, so the audio should be coming from this microphone. You might hear the fan noise because I was using my Shure SM7B here just so you can hear the difference. This is, wait, let's do this. Um, this is my Shure SM7B and I'll switch over to. The Rode microphone that is on top of my little monitor. Ideally, I should have it on a boom arm that is just slightly out of reach from my camera and closer to my lips, but we'll have to see how it does. All right, let's go ahead and put this monitor here. And like I said before, there's a mirror here, which is mirroring this. And this is typically used for a teleprompter, which you saw earlier. Let's turn this off. And I've got my HDMI port. So if you can see, uh, my teleprompter, I've got the split lens here and there's Photoshop. If I hide Photoshop, that's the benefit of the split screen because I don't see my lens like this, but I see the person that I'm talking to. So now if I switch over to this and I'm looking at the screen, basically it's a mirrored version of what I see here on my laptop. Then now when I'm talking to the person or when the person is talking to me, they're looking straight at me versus me looking down at my laptop screen. And then my Sony a6400 is getting the tops of my eyes and my big forehead. All right. So that is the benefit of using a teleprompter with my Mac and an external screen. And then I have my Blackmagic Video Assist recording the output and using this pad prompter along with this Lilliput 10 inch monitor, I can now read the same text that is on my laptop. Now I've seen other people do this where they use an iPad using the extended display feature of the iPad. You can do that with an iPad if you want to. I do have an extra iPad, but you know, it takes some processing power and there would probably be a little bit latency. So if we take a look at this view, so if you, if I move this around, There's just a little bit of latency compared to, there's a little bit of latency. On the iPad, I can guarantee that it's gonna be a little bit more. So since this is using HDMI to mirror the screen, the latency will be imperceptible. And if I switch over to this view, These two, my laptop and this should be in sync. And it looks like they are pretty much in sync. Okay. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful for you on learning how to use a teleprompter and a video monitor in conjunction with your laptop so that you can continue to look at your viewers while they're talking and also while you're talking you can still continue to look at the camera if this tips if these tips were helpful for you definitely consider subscribing to my channel i cover again um, tips on live streaming and video technology in general 
and I'll be posting more tips on Ecamm. In fact, I just got my A10, I had my A10 Mini Pro. I'm gonna start testing that with the Ecamm and along with some other tests that I haven't seen other people do related to latency. If those type of gear and gadgets related to video are interesting to you, hit that subscribe button on the way out and thanks for watching.